Many of us love World of Tanks, but what are tanks actually like outside of the game? We'll track down ex-tankies and the people behind these machines to find out what tanks are really like. Put World of Tanks accuracy to the test and give you tips and tricks to overcome your adversaries in the field of battle. In this episode, we take a look at another iconic tank from the Second World War. We'll explore how it performs inside and outside of the game, and we'll be talking to one of the luckiest men in the world who got to ride in the last running, Panzer Kampfwagen 6 Ostiv E. It is, of course, the Tiger. Doesn't that ramble make your belly warm? Well, not quite, but it certainly produces other feelings. <laughs> One of the best things about the Tiger is the absolute ginormous rumble that it, it produces. Anyone who's never seen the Tiger in actual action needs to go and hear it. To be fair, not a lot of people still alive probably have seen it in action, but... That's what, been, that's what I said! Go, go, go see it! If you haven't gone and seen it, go see it! Anyway, here it is in game... Now, a lot of people have a lot of complaints or reserves about the Tiger in game. Yeah, a lot of people do complain about it. it's a bit lacklustre, the armour doesn't seem to stand up, too, too many critical hits, and it's just not a particularly well rounded tank. Well, I want to argue the point that a lot of people have the reputation of the Tiger from the fact that in World War II, the Tiger mostly fought tanks that are considered Tier 5 and 6 on the tech tree. So in the war it had a reputation for fighting tier 5s and 6. Now the Tiger in this game, take it against a bunch of tier 5s and 6s and it will do great. So the reputation is still warranted but there are a lot bigger fish in the sea. Oh definitely, definitely. You think the Tiger's main adversary during the whole war was either the Churchill or the Sherman, both tier 5s. Yeah, and the T-34. Yeah, again tier 5. Yeah, so the reason the Tiger is so well known in real life is because it went against tier 5s, it was overpowered. I mean, God, it took, was it, 8 tanks? Was that what the US Army manuals were saying? <laughs> it's 5, you, you'd have to approach it from um, 5 different angles, 4 different angles, give um, the time it took the Tiger, the Tiger to knock out the other 4 Shermans, the 5th Sherman would get behind it and put a shelter in. Well, I love the odds. Yeah, I, I'd like to point out they are American Shermans, it's not the British modified Fireflies, because they, they could punch through it with um, still fairly difficult but once you start getting the experienced tank crews it starts to become less of a isn't, less of an issue isn't the Firefly tier 6 in the uh, tech tree Firefly's in the game yet oh I swear it was okay that's a shame it should definitely be in the game the it's, a, why it's not uh, uh, well the main reason is it's a British modification but what I mean is for the British tech tree dude Obviously, the British century hasn't been completely finalised yet, so... Is it not on there? No. Oh, that's a shame. I'm going to go kick them in the ass and say, Oi! Firefly! Anyway, 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 back back to the actual game. As you can see here, I've been held up at this pretty much standard corner, trying to use the uh, Tiger to its abilities, more of a longer-range sniping tank. Uh, with limited success at the moment, um, more due to luck and the angle I'm trying to fire at, but as you can see... The Tiger's gun does quite like to take tanks out at longer range. Yes, yeah, the strength of the Tiger in this game is that you've got to do long range fighting. There's no way in the skirmishes you're going to survive the close range brawlers like the IS. Um, it's just not so good. You've got too many weaknesses, too many flat surfaces on the Tiger to make it a good close combat tank. Yeah, uh, generally in the, in the war you'd have the engagement ranges up to um, more than a thousand meters. Yeah. That makes the Tiger much more effective once you get around the sides or get close enough that you can see some of the massive viewports and weaknesses that the Tiger has on the front armour. It's so much easier to penetrate. I don't think you do the Tiger fully justice in this game because you have no ventilation and your crew isn't 100% is it? I know, I know, but what can you say? I've got lots of other tanks in the way. <laughs> As you can see, there's a perfect example there. Even at the, the medium to close range, the gun still has the punch. It will quite happily poke holes through just about any tank up until its own tier, yeah. as long as you know where to shoot. 
Yeah, we're also showing that this range, what, 170 meters was that? You, the tiger's arm is offering no protection against the panther. Yeah, a panther, it has got the sniper needle gun, so that has a reputation of punching through just about anything. Yeah, that that's, yeah, there's, it's made of butter, really. You might as well have butter for armor anyway. Whoa! Yeah, very, very lucky I didn't reload half a second quicker. <laughs> Allies have a great way of doing that. Let's not pay attention to our ally and drive in front of him. I'm sure we've all experienced it before, spanking the old shot off of a, a friendly just because they're not paying attention. <clears throat> I've never done that! <clears throat> Ever. Yeah, of course you have. Um, now, sadly, uh, the attacks of the stupid are contagious in this game. As you're about to see, I thought, oh, quite low hit points. It's all right. I can push up this side road all by myself. I don't have to worry about the tank destroyers and the artillery that are up there. No, you can't see them. They're, they're not rendering on the map, are they? Uh, you can see from the explosions and the uh, the mass of wrecked tanks that there's probably something fairly large up there. No, you're safe. Come on, keep pushing up. Keep pushing up. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. I reckon I can take it. Do you reckon I can take it? I uh, don't know. What, what's the worst that could happen? This. Well, yeah. Let's look at the tank stats from the World of Tanks Armoury article they recently did on the Tiger. You should definitely check it out, but here's a summary. The front armour plate is around 100 all the way through. So, unless you've got an average penetration of around 125, you shouldn't bother, else you're looking for lucky shots. A thing to note about the Tiger, although I said in the last video you shouldn't brawl with it, and you shouldn't, if you get into a one-on-one -on -one situation with anything of your own tier or below, like the IS, you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. You've got a lot of HP, so just take your time with your 88mm, keep hitting them, and eventually they will die before you. So that's the Tiger in World of Tanks. Now let's look at it outside of the game. There she is. What a beast. It's, it's one of these magical creatures that you see and you hear about so much from World War II. It's meant to be a scary death machine. When you see it, you, you love it. You do love it, you can kind of sympathise for the Allied soldiers facing them, just from the the, the lung vibrating kind of, the, the bass rum, almost a roar, it's primal kind of noise it generates. It is, there's no other tank like it. All the tanks we saw that day, uh, Robertson Tank Museum, none of them sounded anything like it. No, none of them, none of them. I mean, obviously the uh, Tiger was brought in to directly deal with the threat of the Russian KV-1. Uh, pretty much as soon as the KV turned up, it could wipe the floor with any Panzer IVs, Panzer threes that were still in service. So um, the German High Command commissioned Henschel and Porsche to come up with two rival designs. Now the Henschel one was chosen over the Porsche one, which actually broke down slightly less. Slightly less? Only slightly. Well, how, uh, were they not reliable or something? Uh, no, no, because the, the, they were rushed into production, same as the Panther. They were woefully unreliable. They were difficult to service, caught fire. Even the, the, their um, coolant fans were vulnerable to shrapnel bursts and anything like that. Ouch! It sounds like they had a lot of weaknesses. They did, but when you look at it, the sheer size and weight of this tank, I mean, it was bigger than just about anything the certainly the British and the Americans could field at the time. Even um, a lot of the Russian examples, um, it was just a huge heavyweight monster. Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't be one of these infantrymen that sees one of these, even even if the armour wasn't that strong compared to, say, some of the Russian monsters, it was still insanely large. The thing is, the, the armour itself, especially when it was first produced, it was pretty much impervious to any Allied anti-tank weapon fired from the front. Oh, really? Yes, it was considered that. They, they actually, that's when we talk about the tactics of trying to flank the vehicles, go for the, the side and the rear armour. It was, it was impervious. Well, isn't that more to do with the fact the Allies' guns were woefully underpowered rather than the Germans' armour was too thick? Oh, definitely. You look at the, the Allied six-pounders and the um, 74, 75 mils, uh, they were woefully, woefully inadequate for the job they are expected to do. Then when you look towards the later war, you had the British 17-pounder that would quite happily poke holes through just about any German armour that was around. Yeah, I... If I remember rightly, the early German armour had the exact same issue against the Russians, and then they developed the Tiger, and then the British had the exact same problem against the Tiger. Oh, definitely. That, I mean, the whole war was just one upmanship. It's who's got the biggest toys. <laughs> and certainly the Germans ended up with the biggest toys, but it was manufacturing that uh, let them down. Oh, yeah. It was, it was manufacturer supply and availability of materials. 
Obviously, one thing we're yet to touch on is one of the Tiger's most infamous pieces of equipment, its 88mm cannon. The 88mm, the thing the Tiger was built around. It literally was made just so it can house this thing. Now, this thing comes from when the Germans saw the KV-1s for the very first time and shot themselves. Oh yeah, the, the first engagement against the first 20 KV-1s. I mean, the Germans were throwing everything at them. Their, their Panzer 38Ts, even up to their 150mm artillery guns at 200 metres, they weren't penetrating. It's only when the Luftwaffe battalion lowered their um, 88 flat guns, they started punching through. It still took 12 hits, but they still managed to do it. 12 hits is quite a lot. It still, still is a beast of a gun. I mean, you're looking at a weapon that can quite happily engage enemy armour up to 4,000 metres. 4,000 metres, you don't get that in World of Tanks. Definitely not. And now a minute with the man who was commanding that Tiger tank, Victor Keasley of Wargaming.net. And like our other interviews from Tank Fest, the audio quality is not the best, so switch on the captions provided. There he is, the very happy man. How does it feel? Um... That was absolutely fun. Did, did you see how it exploded when it just ignited? No, unfortunately we didn't. We were too far away. Uh, that's uh, probably... Uh, they run this one uh, one or two times a year. So the maximum, apart from the professional driver, professional supervisor, one or two more people. It's like winning 10 million euros. Uh, it's priceless. It's almost priceless. You, you can throw a lot of money to do one. The, the Black Tiger tanks stationed in the museums, yes. right? Only work in one. Uh, the only work in one. Uh, I know, I know in Porto Lavelli in California, there's a working Panther tank, so some people are lucky to have driven that one. And Sumir Museum has the uh, Pink Tiger, I guess, driving. So it's pretty much just a couple of those left in the whole world. Driving. Only Tiger one, though. You just drove it in. I just did. Oh, I just did. That, that was fantastic. I have no words. I'm, I'm out. Whoopee! <laughs> 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 Thank you. Okay. Um. The Tiger Tank, certainly deserving of the title of one of the most iconic tanks of the Second World War. For all those of you out there who are interested in history, a mini documentary has been produced about medieval reenactment and why people do it. The video is produced for a university dissertation and it features the reenactment group I'm lucky enough to be a member of. Follow the link in this episode description to view the whole video and more of its creator's work. Next episode we're going to look at the Sherman tank, what the Americans brought to the war and how they fared, struggled and succeeded on the field of battle. We're also going to announce the winners of the Hunters Down and Subscribers Lucky Dip competition from the Gamescom episode. And if we're lucky, we'll be able to catch up with Nigel Montgomery and his restoration projects. See you next time.